Thank you. Well, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Rob Holliday. Um, I am. I work in the baseball ops department here. I'm the director of amateur scouting administration. I've been fortunate enough to be with the Phillies for a long time. Uh, very fortunate. Uh, I'm originally from uh, northern New Jersey, Maplewood, New Jersey. Uh, but as I said, I've been here in Philadelphia for quite a while. Um, you know, we're gathered today. Basically, we're going to recognize and discuss uh, the Juneteenth celebration. And I think we all have a lot to learn and, and contribute. Um, we call this discussion Juneteenth a uh, discussion on liberation, education, and celebration. And that's what we're gonna do here today. Um, we're gonna have a conversation, talk about the history, and we're gonna talk about how it's relevant today and add in whatever else comes up. So it'll be a free-flowing thing. Um, I'm honored to be here today with you guys. It's been a while, we haven't seen each other in quite a while. Um, my colleagues and friends from the Philly, so it's really nice to be here in the ballpark and be here with you. So why don't we get started and, and each of you introduce yourselves and we'll start over here with Jalen. Yeah, um, my name is Jalen Green. I'm originally from Dover, Delaware, uh, and I work here at the Philadelphia Phillies in ticket operations. Um, I've been here for about five seasons and been loving it ever since I've been here. So. Hmm, that was pretty good. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> no, I try. Uh, my name is Gary Matthews, uh, AKA, I guess, the Sarge. Interesting enough, I just spoke with Pete Rose yesterday and he says, you remember when I nicknamed you the Sarge there? And it just <laughs> stuck, I was like, boy. He, every time I talk to him, some kind of way we get around to talking about uh, <laughs> Pete. But I've had the uh, honor of being in Major League Baseball since uh, um, out of actually high school, um, relatively easy, easy, I mean, growing up. Grew up without a dad, uh, he was killed actually going back to Alabama. Um, my mom and dad were from Montgomery. So we were going back on a vacation and he was actually uh, killed in a car accident on um, recap tires. This is why to this day, no one in my family drives <laughs> recapped uh, tires. But anyway, my mother had a broken neck, broken leg for me, nothing happened to my brothers and uh, went on the road from there, getting into high school, signing. Um, when I say relatively easy, I really do mean that. I did a commercial in high school and got residuals on it until I signed uh, number one. And then I was in the major leagues at, in four years. It should have been three, but the hard way, I asked the question to Charlie Fox, hey, uh, why didn't you let me steal that base? And he said, you don't get paid to ask questions here. Get your stuff and go down. Well, that particular spring, I was hitting close to 500, but it was a lesson, keep your mouth shut. Next year, uh, uh, I was able to make it and um, going to various teams, um, like each one, three or four years, uh, they were tired of me and I was tired of them. And uh, um, having a son that have played in the, the major leagues kind of comes really full fold for me. But I do learn one thing. My mom said, if you don't have something good to say about someone, just don't say it. And I've taken that philosophy and it really has helped me uh, throughout the years. I'm Brittany Shields. Um, I work in communications for the Phillies. I've been here since 2014. Um, I was born in New Hampshire, lived in Oklahoma, lived in New York, in Pennsylvania because my dad was in the Air Force, so we moved around a lot. Hi, I'm Mel Thompson. Uh, I've been in professional baseball for 43 years from Washington, D.C. Um, you know, it's uh, just been a pleasure to be around most of these guys here and be around the Philadelphia area. That's why I still make home here. All right, uh, my name is Kenny Johnson. I'm the manager of community engagement for the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, West Philadelphia, born and raised. Spent a lot of time on playgrounds, of course. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I first started with the Phillies uh, when I was pretty young. I was in high school. Uh, that was, gosh, a little over 20 years ago, uh, working with some of our youth programs and our kids programs. Then from there, kind of uh, moved on to doing a lot of our community work, getting out there, meeting folks, kind of spreading the joy of the Phillies around. Uh, it's been a fun ride uh, so far and looking to keep that going. 
Yeah. Great. Well said. I think that's what we all have in common. We've been here for a while and we all love it. So very fortunate. Um, so for Juneteenth, uh, this is something that, um, you know, is a term that gets thrown out there and a lot of times people just don't know what it is. Um, so in a nutshell, my interpretation of it is basically this is a recognition of the date back in, on June 19th, 1865. And this was a significant date in where there was a large number of slaves that got, that got freed. It was in Texas. And this was kind of like the la one of the last groups that, uh, that got their freedom. So as we know, uh, President Lincoln enacted the Emancipation Proclamation in January of 1863. So this was like two and a half years later. So you can imagine uh, what that must have been like for someone who's been enslaved their whole lives and then all of a sudden you're free. So it was a big celebration. So although there were celebrations probably all over the country because slaves were being freed at different times, uh, this one was kind of like uh, uh, probably a, a bigger one and so this became kind of a celebration time. So, um, so you'll hear it called Juneteenth, but it also, you'll hear the term of um, Freedom Day or Jubilee Day or Liberation Day or just Emancipation Day. So it's all the same thing. So basically, this is what Juneteenth is all about. Um, the reason that we're here today to talk is because there were conversations in the office just about this and that we figured out a lot of people just didn't know what this was. So we thought that this would be a good opportunity to, to discuss it and to inform people. So really it was Jalen and Kenny that kind of got this started. So why don't you guys go ahead and start and, uh, and explain what happened. Yeah, so of course this was over 250 years ago when, uh, when that important day came along, uh, obviously before the times of Twitter and Instagram. So when news of the Emancipation Proclamation two years earlier had, had come out, of course, uh, in Galveston, Texas, they didn't know that that had passed or that Abraham Lincoln had, um, had enacted it. Uh, so it took two years for the Union, Union Army to make their way to Texas and basically announce to all the folks there that of course, um, they're all free from enslavement. So that day, I guess celebrations erupted, and from that point forward, there have been celebrations all across the country kind of celebrating this momentous occasion. Uh, and it's similar to a lot, of, um, a lot of other Independence Days, like Mexican Independence Day or Filipino Independence Day, where folks are celebrating a chance to no longer be oppressed, but also kind of uh, reassume their identity kind of learn more about their past and kind of be able to represent themselves. So I always look at it as a very important day, um, you know, and, and just an opportunity to be able to celebrate that opportunity to represent yourself and, and be yourself. Yeah, I mean, greatly said. And I think because of the, all the events that happened last year, uh, we all know we all were in the pandemic, you know, racial injustice was a big topic last year with the Black Lives Matter movement and stuff like that, you started seeing companies and organizations start to recognize certain holidays, especially holidays that celebrate independence. Well, one of them was Juneteenth. You know, luckily, you know, we work at an organization here that cares, and the question got presented to us, you know, hey guys, you know, what is Juneteenth? We wanna know, we wanna make sure we're right and that we inform the audience, you know, what it is. So, you know, luckily Megan, the social media group and them, they came to us and then that's kind of how this all got started. Um, I'm excited to see it and I'm glad we could talk about it because I think it's one of those holidays that most people don't know. And to me, it should be known because just like how much we celebrate the 4th of July, that's how we should be celebrating Juneteenth because we all fought we died, we were property. This is a big deal for us. And yes, we still have a long way to go, but this was the first big step to recognizing that we, go to, we don't have to work for anyone the next day if we don't want to. You know, we can go see our families again. You know, it, this day kind of sets up, you know, for us to work here now. You know, who knows if we would have never got freed. We don't know where we would be at right now. 
I wouldn't, you know, you guys wouldn't be able to play baseball. I wouldn't be able to work for one of my favorite baseball teams of all time. Um, so today is, so Juneteenth is definitely one of those holidays that, you know, I believe we need to talk about and not just talk about it on the day or on Black History Month, but I think it's something that we really need to start educating people on and letting them know that, you know, this is our history. You know, black, whatever, at the end of the day, we're African Americans and the key word in that is Americans. And everything that America stands for is freedom. That's part of American history, we need to talk about it. Well, that's good, and that's and and that's great that you're having the discussions in the office, and it was brought, you know, to attention of social media and everything. And I think anytime we can have constructive discussions about history, it helps bring us all together. And you know, being from New Jersey, uh, Juneteenth wasn't something that we saw recognized, you know, that often. And so I really didn't learn a lot about it until recent years. So what about all of you? When did you start to start to be informed to learn about Juneteenth. What about you, Brittany? I would say I was pretty young. Um, I grew up in New York for part of my childhood, and that's where my grandmother eventually moved to. Um, she's going on 100 this year, so it's a pretty, pretty big accomplishment. And um, we would ask her like when we were younger, like, what was it like when you were growing up? And she pretty much told us like she was born onto a plantation. She was a sharecropper. Like Her father, their family all went through that. She told us about her great grandfather, how he was born into slavery. So it was like, it was like something that came close to home. I was like, oh, what is this about? So we went to festivals and I ended up taking coursework in college to learn more about Black History, Juneteenth, and you know that's where I really got the idea of like I should really be celebrating this. This is a part of my history. It's a part of my son's history. So I made sure it was like something you know I immersed him into as well. So very good. What about you, Sarge? Well, again, growing up in California, honestly, I didn't even realize there were any uh, prejudice going on. Our high school was a melting pot from Asian, Hispanics, uh, and so on. Uh, I didn't really realize that until um, 71 in AA. It was in Amarillo, Texas. Going to Arkansas was a rude, rude uh, awakening. And um, um, other than that, I can honestly say, that would be the only time. And, and that was a time where you'd go to play the game and then go back to the hotel. You know, at the game, they had like uh, monkeys on a string being hung and waving them around and so on. But, you know, again, uh, in Little Rock, uh, where we were playing, I was going like, man alive, is this what's been going on? When you're in California and the news or things that are going on, it's more of, uh, they suppress the news, so you don't hear about all those really, you know, harsh things that are going on in other parts of the uh, of the country. Obviously, you know, right there, if it's the watch riot or this or that. But honestly, uh, until uh, uh, lately, uh, I never knew a whole lot about Black Wall Street. I started reading it, and then when you go like, well, gosh, where's the legacy? Well, the legacy was burned down. You know, there was a family in uh, Manhattan, in, in uh, uh, California, that they had land right there at uh, Manhattan Beach, and they took it with dominant uh, domain. So when you talk about history, and when you talk about, you know, the legacy, and then having something uh, to be able to fall back on, well, when it's taken away, you know, through, you know, the law or whatever, however they want to uh, do it, it makes it difficult. And then also, I mean, let's face it, you got to be educated, you know, and if you're not really uh, educated, then uh, it's, it's difficult to catch up. It's hard to catch up when you're educated, but if you're not educated, you just have uh, uh, no chance, no chance at all. So, Mill, in Maryland, was this something that was recognized there? What about your experience? Not at experience? all. You know, going through school, we never learned anything about it. Um, you know, pretty naive until, like, Sarge, when I went to Kingsport, Tennessee <laughs> for rookie ball, and I found out what a sundown city was, <laughs> you know. And uh, once the sun went down, you better not be on that side of the tracks. You better be across on the side where you belong. So it was a real wake-up call for me because, you know, I couldn't even understand it because coming from up north, you don't, you don't run into stuff like that. I can remember when I first got there, I was trying to find a place to stay. You know, and I walked around, naive, of course, 
And I saw a sign that said, room for rent. And I knocked on the door. No answer. Knocked. So the lady next door goes, can we help you? I said, uh, yeah, could you tell them I inquired about the, the room for rent? I came back the next day, the sign was gone. <laughs> let me know a lot. <laughs> so I ended up staying at the hotel for two and a half months because there was no way I was going to, you know, because across the tracks was too far for me to try to get to the ballpark, you know. So I just, hey, this is, this is reality of the world, that even though I didn't really run into it until then, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was definitely an eye opener for me. So it was uh, it's tough I, now as far as Juneteenth I've learned a lot about it now with the Black Lives Matter movement that's really opened up a lot of things you know for us about even just you know you know redlining where they you know like Sarge said they're taking people's houses and, and just doing things that you know we had no control over and couldn't do anything about you know and it's a certain place where you you should live and you can't live over here and you know it's just you know Life is something, man. It really is. Well, Kenny, you're a lot younger than me. So <laughs> they weren't teaching it in, when I was in school. So what about you when you were, was this something that was taught in school at all here in Philly? Uh, so, you know, I, I, I went to schools uh, in and around Philadelphia. Uh, growing up, I grew up in a very multicultural household. Uh, my mom was from the Philippines. My dad was from Philadelphia, uh, African-American. Um, so I always kind of got bits and pieces of, of everything. Um, and to be honest with you, uh, throughout school, uh, a lot of it was mostly told from a certain point of view, a very, I guess you can call it Eurocentric uh, kind, of, kind of point of view, where you learned a lot of history, uh, a lot of European history, and then how that carried forward here to the United States. So it's all great because you learn a lot of really great pieces of history and, and how we got here. Uh, but the only problem is it, it leaves out pieces that would have probably had been valuable. And I feel like Juneteenth m was one of those pieces um, where I think now I'm hoping that it's being introduced into the curriculums in the same schools that I went to. Um, but if not, I think that is something that needs to be introduced in there because there, there's a lot of pieces of history that aren't comfortable. Um, but this is one of those times when an uncomfortable thing in history was made right, and as Jalen mentioned, it, it was one of those steps, continual steps for the next 100, 200 years to hopefully be able to make things a little better to get to where we are today. Um, so yeah, un unfortunately, I, I didn't really learn about it more until recently, over the past five or so years. Um, but now that I know about it, it's, it's definitely a great opportunity to be able to bring everyone together to celebrate a really important moment in history. Yeah, and it, and it really is a celebration, and it, it's, it's really a, a positive thing. And what about you, Jalen? Was it taught in your schools at all? So it wasn't taught in my schools, but, you know, one of the benefits of living in Dover, Delaware, I live 10 minutes right down the street from an HBCU, uh, Delaware State University. And because of that, my parents put me in a lot of programs. Uh, my aunts, uncles, cousins, sister, they're all in fraternities and sororities. And the one thing about that, if you're part of the Divine Nine, you know, they're gonna push black history into you and you're gonna be exposed to it because they make sure that you know where you come from, why we do this and why you should be proud to be, you know, African-American. So I think I was kind of lucky enough to be around that and exposed to that. So I did learn at an early age what Juneteenth is. That's why, you know, like I said, when it used to pass and, you know, we'll do like little social media posts and stuff like that, but it wasn't getting the recognition I think it should have got, I think that was just because of lack of education. Like, cause like you said, I, no, I mean, across the board, it sounds like no one learned this from school. We all had to go research and find it on our own, um, which is, is a little sad, but I mean, that's why we're doing stuff like this. So then we can educate everyone um, and find other ways to reach people. Cause if they're not gonna teach it in the school, we gotta find other ways, you know, to educate those about our history. Yeah, and if you think about it, it really isn't that long ago. Yeah. I mean, when we researched my family, we, we went back, and I know my, my great-great-grandfather, Jack Holliday, was, was a freed slave. I think he was born in 1840, and he was freed and educated and had land. And we know he had three wives. We don't think he had them at the same time, but, <laughs> but he had three. And so we got a little breakdown of the family, so uh, we don't think. But, um, 
but anyway, but it's really, when you can trace it that easily, it's not that long ago. And I think in some of the, the research that I found, I think some of it was beginning to be taught in some areas and then got kind of overshadowed by the civil rights movement too. And, and that, you know, which is, of course is another extremely important topic. So anyway, this has not been in the forefront the way it should be, so um, we're helping it to do that now. Um, so to the group, with more awareness of Juneteenth now, how would you like to see it recognized? Like what, what would be your roadmap to getting this out there and informing people about what's going on? Especially when they see these celebrations, now they know what it is, but what, what do you think? How would you like to see it done? That's a, pretty, that's a pretty intense, pretty good uh, question because again, you know, what, what would be the best way to, uh, I mean, help? I mean, obviously, the exposure and people knowing about it and then getting behind it uh, and then starting, you know, with kids that are earlier to get them exposed and uh, having a celebration, maybe wherever, ballpark or here to celebrate it, but more so to let the younger generation to know uh, what to do and what it's all about. Uh, and I think that that would really help. And then obviously you start to come up with more and more creative uh, ideas. For me, national holiday. You know, look how long it took to get Martin Luther King through all the states. And as I research this, there are three states right now that, that don't recognize Juneteenth. And that would be Hawaii, North and South Dakota. So I think we need to put some pressure on our Congress people and let them know that this should be a celebration and that how long it took us to get Martin Luther King a national holiday and pass it through. I think Arizona was the last one for that yeah, one. Yeah, they were the last one <laughs> for a while. And it wasn't so much that they changed because of uh, economically, uh, it was more of a lot of the bigots died off. And then the younger generation that were coming were, were there and then pushing forward. And the younger people really are the ones that are causing, you know, a lot of the change because at that time, Arizona was willing economically to just lose all types of money for people coming there vacationing. And they said, okay, we're just gonna stop coming. You know, pretty soon this person's not in the office, that one, and then you're able to get your cause uh, taken care of. Well, it's interesting that you brought that up because um, you know, Martin Luther King's holiday was enacted, I believe, in 1983. <clears throat> so I remember going to school um, before that, and I, I, you know, my town didn't have a lot of families of color, but on Martin Luther King's birthday, we would take off from school. And that sparked conversation, because the next day, I remember my parents taking me and explaining to the, the, the principal, this is why I was not here. And then you would have all the other kids asking, well, why weren't you in school? Well, this is why. And that started a conversation. Oh, okay, now I understand. And so you can explain, and that, that's how we learn. So, uh, so that's what we did up until 1983, was what we, we, were, we were all held out of school and had the opportunity to explain why, and I think it helped. So. Um, what do you think? I think along with that, I would say support of like local nonprofits that are like doing the festivals and the parades, mm -hmm. just to you know build up what they have to put that forth. If they have more money to make these parades and festivals bigger, that could possibly bring more people in, bring the awareness to you know the younger generation as well. Yeah, I mean I agree with everyone at this table. I think for me, the biggest thing is obviously make it a national holiday so we can actually observe and educate ourselves. But I want to be sure too, if we do go that route, I don't want it just to be a holiday where people could just take off and then we just forget the meaning for it, like a Labor Day. Like most people don't know Labor Day, we take off because of the labor movement that happened. But like for this, it's one of those things where, you know, companies, you know, even when you said like the government needs to back in, companies need to back up, you know, donate to these events, you know, tell the story, you know, educate, use their platforms to get the education out there. And then, so then we can really take the day to observe why this day is so, you know, important, why Freedom Day is so important. Yeah, I mean, I, I was born into Martin Luther King Day, so it was one of those things that had always been around. Um, so just kind of seeing how now with Juneteenth, the steps that have to be taken to make that a national holiday, um, 
you know, and it's, it's, it's been great to see Martin Luther King Day and how that's evolved into a day of service where you volunteer, where you go to a museum to learn more about Dr. Martin Luther King, take part in some of the activities that are going on. Um, and I feel like that Juneteenth has a chance to also be like that, where you take an opportunity to learn more about it so that hopefully something as important as that is, is remembered and, and becomes a part of our culture um, where everyone is aware of it. Um, and everyone can be able to take part in it. Well, here's a question that I get asked a lot, and maybe you all do too, but people will come up and say, um, how can I help? How can I support it? You know, maybe people who aren't of color and just trying to understand. So uh, what do you say to, to, to that when people ask you that? Be getting educated, learning about it. That's how we grow and we understand, you know? Um, that's Absolutely. Basically, it you know. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody says, "Oh, I'm not a racist." Well, why are you not a racist? You know, they, they explain it. You know, they, some of them don't really understand right. what it what it really means, and and you know, how it causes so much tension and stuff between. Because up north, you don't see anything like that. I mean, when I got to Kingsport, Tennessee, I saw the Confederate flags and the, and the shotguns in the back of the trucks and stuff, and it, it was it was you know, a wake up call. I said, "Okay, I stay away from them." You know, that's just that simple, you know, but up here you don't see, you don't see all that. No, no, no. Yeah, um, I think additionally, obviously the education is the most important yeah. part of it. Uh, but once you're educated, I'd say go out there to a festival, uh, go out there, celebrate with folks. I mean, this is a celebration uh, similar to like the Puerto Rican Day Parade. You see people of all backgrounds, of all nationalities, everything go out there to celebrate that. Uh, so go out there and celebrate along with folks. Take part in those, um, you know, be joyous about an important occasion like this um, and, and take advantage of the opportunity to meet people and to be able to get to know them and how they feel about the holiday as well. That's right. And help someone too, you know, do something nice. Like you said, if you can do something in the community that day, do it, you know. Just, and you know, again try to make it into more of a habit where maybe we again don't just do it on the one day but try to be involved in you know any local community outreach projects and stuff like that you know use the day to you know enjoy the freedom like you know celebrate it like you said educate yourself volunteer just make someone else happy and smile and you know glorify the fact that we are free here like Well, I always appreciate it when people ask because I think they're already there yeah. um, and just trying to understand, you know, maybe some of the unique challenges that we have. And we also want to understand other people's points of views and challenges that they have. And I think that helps bring us all together. So I always appreciate that when people, when people ask. Um, changing gears a little bit. So what do you think Juneteenth should mean to baseball? How should baseball be involved? How, how should this affect baseball? Any thoughts? Well, when it is, in, in terms of baseball, the advertisement and building up and, and saying, this is the date we're gonna celebrate it, this is why uh, we're celebrating this, I think that's when you get that word out, that's when you get, personally for me, uh, more people excited about wanting to uh, uh, be a part of it. The more they understand what it's all about, the, the more participation I think uh, you would get. You know, I just like to say that, you know, the, the gentleman with the ALS fought for a Lou, Dick, Lou Gehrig Day. And, you know, once you bring stuff to the forefront and you have enough people pushing it and going after it, it opens eyes and it makes you, you know, appreciate, hey, maybe we need to get involved in this. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the more you push, uh, I definitely have to give credit to Major League Baseball because they've been encouraging and fostering discussion. Uh, there have been a ton of, uh, I guess over the past year or so, virtual series where you have a chance to listen to discussions from some key folks, similar to what we're doing right now, mm -hmm. um, that have some important input on it that might affect the way that you view things as well. So I think that, that discussion that's that's been going on has been very important to making uh, Juneteenth a part of baseball. 
Well, that's the luxury that we have, is we have the ability to connect with a lot of people, you know, being in, in sports. And um, yeah, and I, and I applaud what we've been doing. And, and hopefully we'll continue to be able to educate more people and, and influence others to, uh, you know, to get behind this celebration for sure. So now, what's next? What are the next steps? You know, maybe Kenny, what's going on around here now? What do you think should be the next steps from here? You know, anybody? I, I think what we're doing right now is, is huge. You know, a platform and we come out and we discuss so people can understand, number one, our backgrounds, where we come from, and, and just get educated and learn more about it. And, We'll continue to move forward from there. You know, you got to get it started before you can get it done. And then my family, we're going to at least three or four local Juneteenth celebrations in the area. So we usually like to support those events because there's a lot of small black owned businesses and just a lot of good people. So it's good to support those local events so they can keep on going and grow stronger and stronger. Yeah, I mean, follow big businesses or other organizations follows, you know, what Nike is doing and, you know, Target and all those guys who are, you know, are going to start observing Juneteenth as a holiday, you know, whether, you know, the government issues it or not, they're doing it and they're making sure that, you know, people are educated and they properly observe that day. Um, so I think other businesses need to follow as well. I think that's a, a real good point. Um, Home Depot or those stores that, you know, uh, diversity shops in those areas, having them behind it or signs up going into the store or maybe, uh, you know, you might get a coupon if you're going in and you acknowledge this, whatever it might be, just to get more uh, knowledge of it. But it definitely, you know, from Delta and Home Depot, uh, Google, those, those particular companies, they can get the word out pretty quickly. Yeah, I feel like we're all part of a, a big community, whether you're a community organization, business, wh whatever you are, whatever sector you're in, it all takes everyone coming together. Um, and I'd say definitely the first step, as mentioned, of course, Juneteenth is, uh, is, is in about a week or so from now. Get out there to some of these events. Uh, there's a lot going on throughout the city, especially now that things are opening back up again. Uh, great resource, uh, Visit Philadelphia. They list out a, a number of uh, celebrations that are going on all around the city. Just to name a few, I know that there's a big uh, celebration that, ha that has happened each year at Malcolm X Park uh, that's organized by the PA Juneteenth Initiative. So normally they do a big parade down there, uh, but this year they're actually gonna do it a little smaller just based on some of the restrictions that are still in place, uh, where they're gonna do a freedom march as well as a smaller festival in the park. Uh, so it should be a great opportunity to be able to go down there and see what's going on and connect with folks. Uh, I know that in Germantown at the Johnson House, uh, they're doing their festival again this year um, where they have a ton of different activities for families, for children, uh, for folks that just want to learn a little bit more about the holiday and see some of the history. Uh, and then last but not least, another one I can think of is uh, the African American Museum in Philadelphia. They help and they're presenting a number of different activities going on throughout the day, as well as during this week where you can get down there to learn a lot more. So I'd say take the opportunity, uh, go out there, meet some folks, um, and then learn a little and, and observe the holiday. So now I think we'll all know what it is when we see some of these celebrations and when we see um, you know, stories on the news about this. I hopefully we're all a little bit more informed now and hopefully others are too. And um, I don't have any more, except to open it up to everyone. Does anyone have anything else to add or that we didn't discuss or go into more detail about? Um, otherwise, I think this was great. It was great to be here with all of you and to, and to talk this out. And hopefully this is something that's fun and, and beneficial for, for everyone. And um, thanks for putting it together, for pulling this together, you guys.